Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, a home of Mies van der Rohe. And today as I'm making this recording, it's actually the 50th anniversary of Mies van der Rohe's death. So I want to take a moment of silence. Okay, let's get back into the tutorial. Um, also, on Monday, it's back to school. So this is my second back to school video. So all of you architecture students or students in general that are going back to school on Monday, I hope you have an amazing year. I'm looking forward to another amazing year. Okay, in this video, we're looking at rhino section techniques. So I want to look at a few section techniques and what I want to point out in the beginning is that these are three-dimensional section techniques and we'll talk a little bit more as we move forward into this before we jump into the tutorial I want to go over to the web here and look at my YouTube channel so for those of you who have subscribed already thank you very much for those of you who haven't please subscribe and for all of you click on the little bell so you get the notifications I am putting up videos here at least every week lately they've been rhino and grasshopper but if you look through here there's some other videos on CNC setup using rhino cam some plugins for grasshopper 3ds max Revit I plan on making some Autodesk 360 videos soon so go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the notifications and then my Instagram go ahead and subscribe there it is my first name underscore last name Alfonso underscore Peluso you can see what I'm up to on a daily basis and see what kind of videos I'm putting out and what kind of architecture I'm looking at okay let's get back into the tutorial here all right, so I'm going to make a new file. And I'm going to choose small objects inches. Okay, and we'll take this out of the way for a moment. Okay, so I mentioned I want to work three dimensionally. I want to work in 3D space. So I'm going to type in the shortcut DOC and I'm going to go over to grid and I'm gonna make my grid line count I'm gonna make it 36 inches minor grid lines every one inch major every six minor so every six inches and I'll set my snap spacing to one inch okay and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a a cube so I'm gonna type in the command box go ahead and create that box Okay, and I'm going to set my view to be shaded for the moment. Okay, so what are we looking at today? So these section techniques. The first one we're going to look at is a clipping plane. I know a lot of people use a clipping plane and what I don't like about the clipping plane is it's not it's not real. It's it's virtual. It doesn't actually clip the object. It just clips the view. So you can't do things like snap or add a, a poche or a hatch so let's just start with that what is the clipping plane what does it do it has some good uses but in terms of section tech techniques it's not one that I like very much so I'm gonna type in the command clipping plane and I'm going to set that clipping plane so I'm just gonna pick a couple points now I want my clipping plane to be vertical I want that to be vertical. I'm going to cut vertically through it. Right? By default, it is a horizontal clipping plane. So we're going to do this again. And this time when we type clipping plane, we're going to make sure that we choose vertical from the command line. And I'm just going to pick an edge here. Okay, so it creates this virtual clipping plane. And this is something, turn off the grid snap for a moment. This is something that this clipping plane is something that I can move around 
and it is clipping the view really um, not not clipping the object and let me demonstrate what I mean by that so let's say I clip this object and now I want to draw by snapping to the points of the objects or the, or the vertices now it recognizes the original vertices but it does not recognize where the clipping plane is intersecting the object okay so that's one of the issues that I have with that so we'll go ahead and we'll we'll delete that okay the second thing I want to look at is the section command which I find helpful if you want to make 2d profiles of an object so I can type in the command section I can select the object that I want to make a section of and it wants me to pick the start and the end so we'll do this in two directions so we'll do this along the x-axis and that put it right on the edge because I picked those two points so you see it gave me it gave me a profile let's actually cut it through the middle of it so again we'll type in section and hopefully my midpoint uh, my midpoint snap is on okay so I'm going to pick that midpoint over to this side and it creates that 2D profile and I'll do that once more in the opposite direction so you have to make sure you tell it what object you're cutting the section or you're looking for the section profile which objects you want to cut through okay so that's <clears throat> excuse me so that's that in both directions and if we just hide this if we hide the cube you'll see that so those were our section profiles that we took okay now another way that I want to look at creating a section is what I'm um, calling frame so let's look at four different section techniques actual sec section techniques so we're gonna start with frame we're gonna move on to solid point on boolean look at a bunch of boolean techniques and then contour which seems to be a lot of people's favorites these days especially for CNC -ing and making CNC furniture we see a lot of that so let's start with the frames and now what I want to do is um, keep keep a history so to speak um, not using the Rhino history but just making sure that I always have my original cube my original box so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this box over copy it over a couple feet here okay so that's my original over there we'll keep that there and now we're going to work with the frame and the way that I'm gonna work with the frame is I'm I'm thinking about section techniques so what is what is a section it's it's looking inside of something so I wanna look inside this cube and a lot of times we talk about solid modeling and this is supposedly a solid object in Rhino if I go to the main menu and I go down to solid that's one of my options is create a solid box but it's not like a solid piece of wood that you would go over to the table saw cut through it and there would be it would continue to be solid as you cut through it it's actually in Rhino these solid models are actually empty and we can see that if I go to extract and I choose extract surface I'm gonna pick that front surface so it basically pulls that that surface away from the original object and I can go ahead and delete it and now I'm looking into that box so it is empty it isn't solid also what you're gonna notice is that the ISO curves have now shown up and I demonstrated in my last video and I'm gonna put a link at the end of this video to that video I'm referring to where we can turn the ISO curves off and just to show you that again I'm selecting that object and if I'm in my properties tab I can turn off the ISO curve density for that object okay I'll go back to my layers here okay so we're gonna we're looking at making making the frame okay so what I'm gonna do to make the frame is I'm going to offset this surface 
Okay, so I'm typing in the command offset surface. I select the poly surface that I want to offset. Now I get all these arrows and when I click on the screen it changes the offset direction. I want to offset this inward so I want the arrows pointing down and inward. I have a distance that I can set. Right now it's set to half an inch. That's fine. I can set the, the corner offset and I can set whether or not I want that to be solid. Now typically when I'm doing offset surface I'm, I'm doing it maybe for, for 3D printing. I want my solid to equal yes, so it's a watertight solid object. In this case, to demonstrate the section techniques, I'm going to leave that set to solid equal no. Okay, so it's just I'm just creating this inner frame, and I'm going to use this so that I can put a hatch, okay, as if I'm cutting a section through this object. So I'm going to go over to my layer. So as I as I work today, I want to make sure that I'm making use of layer organization. That's going to be really important today because we're going to be generating a lot of lines. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a layer. I'm going to call this layer, I'm just going to call it section curves. Okay, Remember a, a curve is everything two-dimensional in Rhino whether it's a curve or a straight line. So I'm going to call this section curves and that's where my my 2D geometry is going to exist. So I'll have section curves. Eventually I'm going to have a hatch. But for right now, section curves is fine. And I'm going to draw a couple rectangles. And I'm going to make those vertical rectangles. So this is going to be my start edge. And then that's the rectangle. And I'll do that one more time, choosing vertical from the command line. Here's the start of my edge, the end of my edge, and then the height of my rectangle. So now I have those, I have those two rectangles and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a solid hatch, a solid fill hatch. So I'm going to make a hatch layer that's current and I'm going to type in the command hatch and it says select curves. Select the boundary that I want to hatch. So those are the two rectangles that I made. Okay, now for those of you who have done hatching or pocheting, Rhino can do that, very similar to any software that you've used to create hatches, the type of hatch you'd like to create, uh, whether or not it's uh, solid, you can adjust its scale. We're just going to go ahead and make it a solid fill for now. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm calling the frame section. Now let's set up our viewport so that this looks like a nice drawing. So in this video and the video that I'm going to link at the end, I'm talking about using Rhino to make good line drawings. Okay, you shouldn't need to go to another piece of software. You should be able to stay in you should be able to stay in Rhino. Okay, now if we set this view to pen, if we set the viewport display to pen. Okay, one thing it's going to do is it's going to get rid of the grid. Okay, I sh I've shown in the last video that you can manually turn that grid off, but the pen viewport setting does that for you. So we've already we've we've already done that just now. The other thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to set this to what I call print display, so that I can start to see some of my line weights and my line types. So I'm going to type in print display, and we're going to set that state. So where it says state equal off, I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to click it to on, and then I'm going to press en enter. There's some other settings there, but again, I'll, I'll mention it again. You can check out my other video that I'm going to link to at the end. Okay, so that's on. So now what I'm following here is I'm following the print color. Okay, there's the layer color. So you see that hatch is purple, but let's change the color of that hatch. I'm going to change it to a pink color. Okay, so now it's following my print color. And the other things that I can do is I could make a layer where I make some heavy lines. Okay. And go ahead and make those heavy. And I'm going to make the color of those lines black. And I'm going to make the width of those lines Let's, let's start with one millimeter for now and see what that looks like. So now I can draw I can draw some um, some poly lines. Go ahead and 
draw these here. Okay, and now you see in real time what you see is what you get. You're, I'm, I'm seeing those heavy lines. And let's draw another polyline once more. Just making sure we get all the edges here. Okay, and I am a fan of Make 2D. I, I am. I know a lot of students use it. It's not something that I use a lot because my goal is to make good three-dimensional drawings. Architecture is a discipline that is moving from 2D to 3D. And I say that, um, and I, I kind of chuckle because it's not really new. I mean, three-dimensional drawing has been around forever, but the discipline of architecture is slowly adapting um, to the three-dimensional world. Um, I've been working three-dimensionally for a long time and what I will say to you is the sooner you feel comfortable working three-dimensionally the better off you will be um, so just trying to leave the two-dimensional world behind this gives me some flexibility here so I'm not pinned in or locked into one view okay really good now let's uh, let's move on to the next next technique so that was that was the frame okay now we're going to look at using solid point on so something very similar but we're going to add solid point on and solid point on allows you to manipulate your 3d model and then maybe you can cut a section through it using one of the techniques we're going to get to in a second okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take our original model and i'm going to copy it over copied over a foot here and we're gonna start to manipulate it using solid point on so let's let's type in the command solid point on and we're gonna select this poly surface and it's gonna give me access to all the vertices of this box and I can select those vertices now I can manipulate these using what I call the gumball or not what I call the gumball, but what Rhino calls it. Uh, it's what you see here is the XYZ gumball or gizmo as it's called in other software. So at the bottom of my screen, you'll see that gumball is turned on and I can select that and I can raise that or I can move it right in the X direction or I can move it back and forth in the Y direction. I can um, select this point. Recently I was in LA and I saw the Broad Museum and uh, it has this raised entryway so I, I, I start thinking of some of my explicit modeling techniques where you can select a point and raise it and then here is the the entryway into the building. Okay so that's that is solid point on. Now I can I've manipulated it now I could do something very similar to what we just did using the, the frame section technique. I can do an extract an extract surface pull off that front face oh, let's make sure I get that front face hard to tab through when you're in when you're in pen mode so let's let's go back I'm gonna go back to shaded for a moment so that I can see that a little bit better Okay. All right, so that's gone. And now we're going to do an offset surf. Make sure that goes inward. All our original settings or our settings that we used previously are there. Okay, it's putting it, you're seeing it's putting it on the current layer, so I'm just putting it back to its original layer. Okay. The other thing that I like about Rhino or love about Rhino is that I can draw three-dimensionally so easily without, I love changing the construction plane and a lot of my early Rhino videos, um, I cover manipulating the construction plane. You have to master the construction plane to be really good at 3D modeling in Rhino. But even without that mastery of the construction plane, I can, I can snap three-dimensionally. So let me, let me, uh, make sure that I'm organized with my layers. So I'm going to go back and make my section curves layer current. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a couple closed polylines. 
to be our boundary lines for our hatch. Okay, and we'll type in our hatch command and select those boundaries. Okay, and we'll choose our default solid hatch. And I'll go ahead and place that on the hatch layer. Okay, and unhide by showing the rest of our objects. All right, so the next type of section that we're going to look at is we're going to look at booleaning. Booleaning is a process of either subtracting, union, intersection, or split. So let's look at all of those types. Okay, we'll do that by copying this original. Copy this over, so that should be three let's try yes three feet okay so let's look at the boolean technique so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to create a sphere Okay, let's put that on the original default layer. Okay, let's take a look at the location of that. So I wanted to intersect this object. Okay, that looks that looks good. So let's use this to, to look at the different Boolean operations. Okay, so when you type in the command Boolean, you have some options here. So let's look at the first one, which is difference, which is basically a subtraction. So I'm going to subtract from the box, enter, with the sphere. Now, delete input is set to yes, so the sphere is going to disappear. You could set it to no and it will stay, or keep it at yes and that's going to disappear. Okay, so that is our Boolean difference. Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's, uh, Let's keep a keep a history uh, of what we're doing, so we can see these all in a line. So let's just copy this over a foot. Okay, so let's let's do the boolean difference. Okay. Then we also have a boolean union, which is going to make these two objects one. So that one, that's pretty obvious. It just joins it. They just become one object, very similar to before we booleaned it. We can do a Boolean intersection. Okay, Select the first set, select the second set. Okay, so that gives me the intersection, so the object basically that fits into this void, fits into that subtraction. Okay, before I do that, let's let's copy this so we have a history of this. Okay, so let's do that one more time. We'll do our Boolean intersection. Okay, and the last Boolean that we're going to look at, let's look at Boolean split. Now, just like Boolean subtraction, you have to be aware of which object you're doing the subtraction to or which object you're doing the split to. So select surfaces or poly surfaces to split. I'm going to choose the cube in this case and then select my cutting object which is the sphere. Okay, so now let's move this out of the way and let's move this out of the way. Okay, so that one is a very interesting one because what it did, Boolean split, is it did what we did before all in one command. It did the, subscri the subs subtraction and 
it did the intersection all in once okay all at once all right so just to keep things looking good and and I'm gonna show us how we're gonna print to a PDF in a, in a second here but uh, let's let's work with making some nice line work here so we have set up our, our heavy lines already so I'm gonna go ahead and make that layer current and I'm going to do a dupe edge and I'm gonna that's gonna allow me to get these edges that I'm gonna turn to be heavy lines so now those are duplicated and then I'm going to right click on heavy lines and say change object layer so just getting that to look look fairly decent okay so the benefit of this is when I go to file and I go to file print what I can do is I can now without having to make 2D uh, I can make nice drawings by using image files okay that's one way to do it another way would be um, to keep everything vector and I covered that in my last video which I'm gonna link uh, to this one at the very end so and we'll come back to this in a, in a few seconds just wanted to, to show you what uh, what my thinking was there now the other the other viewport setting that I really like in Rhino is there is a technical okay so that's showing me the dashed lines it's showing me uh, basically the lines that are hidden and this is happening three-dimensionally so as I rotate just keep in mind that those dashed lines it's showing you their layer color okay so just keep that in mind alright so let's let's get into the 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 fan favorite which is um, the section technique which is contour okay so let's let's move on over here and I'm gonna copy this original box over one foot okay so let's let's go alright now you have to be really organized with the layers so I'm gonna set this up to be my uh, my contour and we'll have contours at least one and two for this one okay so I'm gonna type in the command contour and it wants a base point for the contour in this case I'm gonna I'm gonna make that my my bottom bottom edge so I could snap anywhere on the on the grid if I change this to wireframe you see there's a grid here so my base point can be anywhere in a grid or I can set it to the actual corner of the object okay now it wants the direction perpendicular to the contour planes so if I want a bunch of horizontal section lines this is perpendicular to the horizontal and then I can specify a distance between those horizontal contour planes and right now it's set to 0.5 which is half an inch and I'm gonna go with that okay so you see those contour lines have been made and just to see this a little bit better why don't I hide the original extrusion okay those are those are the contours now I can take those, so we're looking at sectioning techniques, and I want to turn those two-dimensional section planes into three-dimensional objects. And I can do that by using the extrude. Okay, those are extruding uh, vertically in the Z direction, so I don't have to worry about the direction. Solid equal yes is not the default. Solid equal no is the default, but since I've recently done an extrusion with solid equal yes Rhino remembers that so make sure your solid equals yes is on and then I'm specifying a distance for this it's uh, 0.125 inches and I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter okay so I have my contour lines now the original contour curves that were made those are still there you can see those are showing up as the green lines I could use a selection filter and I can use SEL and then type in C 
and then CRV, so SEL curve. Okay, that's selecting all my curves in the in the model. Okay, I just want to get rid of the ones by the box, so I'm going to take these away from the selection and just delete those. Okay, so now I have those horizontal planes in three dimensions. So I've essentially taken a, a cube and I've cut it into a bunch of sections. That's one section technique. Now let's look at doing this in the other direction. So I'm going to type in show to get my original box back. Okay, so let's make another layer. I'm going to call this contour 2. Okay, I'm going to make vertical planes this time. Okay, we'll make that current. I'm going to give that layer a color. Okay, let's turn off contour 1. So we'll run through this again. We'll, we'll type in the command contour and select our cube to contour. Pick a base point. Okay, so now we're going to go in this direction. Okay, not not perpendicular, not horizontal, but vertical. Okay, at a distance of half inch between each contour. Okay, so those are the contours, and now we're going to do the same thing where we extrude, and this time we have to be careful which direction. Okay, that's going horizontally. That's that's what we want. Okay, those original curves are still selected. Okay, Rhino has kept the original curves that we we're extruding selected. Those could go on a layer that I turn off, or in this case, uh, I'm just going to choose to delete those. Okay, so let's hide this box. Okay, so now we're contouring in two directions, and let, let's get rid of the top and the sides and this bottom plane. Okay, so now we're looking at this, and um, one thing in Rhino is if I select these objects and I do a zoom scale, because at the moment when I'm orbiting, it's not really orbiting around this, um, this section that I've made here. It's orbiting about all my objects. So what I can do is I can select all of this, and I can type in the shortcut ZS for zoom scale, and now it's orbiting about that object, so that's, that's helpful. So what's missing here is what's missing is the intersections, the lines that connect where all of these meet together. Okay, so let's make a new layer. We'll call it intersections. We'll make that layer current. And I'm going to type in the command intersect. And I'm going to select everything. Okay, now we have now we have those intersections. So that's that's what we want to see. Okay, so that's starting to look good as a three-dimensional drawing. So the last thing that I want to do with this is I want to add I want to add the hatch into this and talk a little bit about the hatch just a little bit further. Uh, you know, as we do a lot of these section diagrams. Diagramming is very big in architecture. I think big architects made that uh, super popular. So we're seeing a lot of that. So let's go back to let's go back to the section curve layer. And I'm just going to draw I'm just going to draw a rectangle here. It's going to be a vertical rectangle. and I'm going to use that as a hatch. So let's make the hatch layer current. We'll go ahead and type in hatch. Okay, I'm going to pick that curve that I made. Okay, keep that as a solid fill. Okay, so what you what you didn't see before that you're really seeing now is the hatch and the edge of the surface are having uh, an issue with one another. They both want to be in the front. They both want to say, hey, look at me, here I am. And that's an issue for us at the moment. So what we can do is we can move these hatches out a, just a little bit away from the object. Um, but before I do that, I want to make sure that I copy this hatch. I'm going to copy it to all. I could do an array, uh, but I'm going to copy it just to all of these 
um, edges. Okay, so now let's look at moving those forward. So if I go to a top view, uh, what I can do is I can use my selection filters. Can't tell you, can't emphasize enough how much I like the selection filters in Rhino. So I do a SEL hatch that selects all of them. And I could type in the command move and I can just move them uh, a really small distance. So my grid snaps off. I'm going to take off my old snap just in case. I'm just going to move those a really small distance and see if that satisfies uh, Rhino. Okay, looks like one of them did not move. It's okay. We'll just let's just copy this one. And I didn't even have to move it that much. It looks like I moved it a little bit more than I needed to. Let's put my O snap back on. Okay. All right. So just want to check, take a look at this. If I do a Control P for print. Okay. So we're still getting, uh, we're still getting nice drawings here. Now I will say, you know, just like whether you're making a drawing by hand or some people are making these drawings in Illustrator, which I, I recommended against in my last video. Uh, wherever you're making drawings, you're making drawings in AutoCAD, you're making drawings in Revit. You know, just remember that there's no there's no magic button that makes a nice drawing. Um, this technique, Make 2D, requires it requires you know some labor. It requires that you go in there and that you spend some time on it. Um, so so keep that in mind that making good drawings does take time it takes um, it takes hours so you can't be afraid to uh, to do that to spend the time on it okay so that's all I wanted to cover in this video thanks again for watching please remember to subscribe uh, to my YouTube and connect with me on Instagram and I will see you next time